Looking for the ultimate convertible car? The second generation Bentley Continental GTC can't be too far from it. A seductive combination of power, style and craftsmanship. Bentley has been making iconic open tourers for over 90 years. Some built to achieve success at Le Mans and Brooklands, others to convey their glamorous owners to the resorts of Monte Carlo and Cannes. All have been memorable, but in truth none has been truly sporting in the supercar sense. Until now perhaps. With a choice of 4 litre V8 or 6 litre twin turbo W12 engines, this Mark II model possesses a blend of transcontinental pace, dynamic drive and luxurious comfort that very few other vehicles can match. Has the market ever been offered a proper four seat luxury convertible supercar? I'd argue not. Yes, there are uh, supercar drop tops with cramped rear seats good for little but designer shopping bags. And at the other extreme, huge leather lined four seater cabrios with lumbering luxury power plants. But nothing that really combines that Ferrari feeling with space enough to share it en famille. In its original form, launched in 2006, this car, the Bentley Continental GTC, arguably got the closest to achieving this, but at heart it was still more of a grand tourer than a great sports car, in first generation form at least. But here we're going to look at the Mark II model, a convertible Bentley that we're told now has the drive to delight Ferrari folk yet still manages to combine that with the space and rare refinement of an open-topped Rolls-Royce. In prospect then, a very special car indeed. These are bold claims you might be tempted to question if you've either owned or admired this car in the past. After all, this second generation GTC, launched in the autumn of 2011, doesn't really look that much different from what went before. But then the things that this design needed, sharper handling and a lighter, more efficient, snarling engine up front, were never really aesthetic. And both are now in place from a car that can reward enthusiasts with a powerfully eco-conscious V8, or can continue to satisfy more laid back landowners with an updated version of the continuing six litre W12 unit. Either way, this for many will be the ultimate expression of convertible motoring. Let's try it. The Continental GT can be credited not only with transforming its brand's bottom line, but also with convincing Bentley that it could make properly sporting cars as well as luxury grand tourers. More powerful and rewarding speed and super sports variations introduced to GTC customers in 2009 and 2010 gave the company the confidence to push the handling boundaries a bit for this second generation version. A car that if you wish it can become more focused than you could ever believe a Bentley to be. Also we're told from rest the experience is much as it's always been. As you ease yourself behind the wheel, admiring the handcrafted leathers and veneered wood before pressing the exquisitely chrome starter button. Somewhere in front of you, a huge engine roars into life with a tone that it's worth taking an extra 25 seconds to appreciate. This the amount of time that it will take to retract the lovely three layered fabric hood. If the GTC in question is powered by this 500 brake horsepower 4 litre V8, there's a purposeful note to the melody. A straining at the leash to be away, unfolding the horizon towards you. If, on the other hand, power has been provided by the uprated 567 brake horsepower W12 unit, then there's a deeper, bassier, more relaxed note. Either way, you're left in little doubt that the drive you're about to make has the potential to be a very rapid one indeed. Owners with access to an airfield or who happen to have a particularly extravagant drive in front of their stately home will marvel in this V8 model as 60 flashes by from rest in just five seconds. 
on the way to a total of 187 miles an hour if they're brave enough. Go for 12 cylinders and there's a fractional improvement to four and a half seconds and 195 miles an hour. Figures you can further improve by opting for the Pokia 616 brake horsepower version of this six litre unit uh, that's been fitted to the top 200 miles an hour GT Speed version. Most owners though, I think will be quite happy with this V8 variant. Um, though the engine in question isn't actually Bentley's, it's borrowed from Audi's S8 Super Saloon, it's been tweaked for Continental GT use with extra torque. There's 660 newton meters of it, and that's nearly as much as you get in the big six liter W12 unit. All well and good, but I haven't yet answered the essential question. Has Bentley created more than merely a wonderful wafting experience. A satisfying sports car, as well as a grand touring gesture. Yes, this isn't the race car rival to Ferrari and Porsche it should never be, but Bentley has created a credible alternative to something like a Volante Aston Martin. If your need is for a very fast convertible that, as well as taking you to the Alps, can take in a lap of the Nürburgring on the way there. The reasons why are down to a whole package of changes, most notably a revised four-wheel drive system that now sends 60% of the engine's output to the rear wheels and 40% to the fronts, instead of equal amounts to all four. Add to that a wider track and various suspension refinements, and you've got a car that feels uh, notably different in Mark II guys. It's more agile, it's less nose-heavy and easier to place in fast corners. Ultimately, more satisfying all round. Especially if you're in this V8 model and you've woken things up with a switch into sport mode via this button down here behind the gear stick. That delivers quicker shifts you can further prompt using these beautifully crafted gear change paddles behind the steering wheel. But such is the improved response of the ZF Auto gearbox both the uh, older six-speeder in the W12 model and the more modern eight-speeder in this V8 feature lightning quick 200 millisecond shifts. Um, such is that response that you generally end up leaving the paddles alone after the initial novelty has worn off. Around the twisty stuff, grip is impressive and thanks to CDC continuous damping control, body roll very well kept in check for a vehicle of this size and weight. Don't expect it to change direction like a Ferrari 458 or a McLaren, but against Aston Martins and Maseratis, this Continental GT is now more than able to hold its own. The steering has been sharpened for a better response, but I'd still like a bit more feel from it. And from the standard brakes, though you can improve these by opting for a set of pricey ceramic ones. When it comes to luxury though, this Bentley is unrivaled. It still rides beautifully on computer controlled air suspension, but thanks to the continuous damping control, is able to react to driver inputs, stiffening things up when the car is being driven aggressively. Alternatively, you can program CDC through one of four different settings from softly supple to firm but friendly. Select one of the stiffer options and it's surprising just how quickly you can hurl this car around twisting country lanes should the need to do so arise. This is thanks to a body shell that's far stiffer than you'll find in most other luxury convertibles, preventing the kind of open top body wobbling that you'll find in cheaper drop tops. And sure enough, this car feels as solid and planted at all times as the coupe model upon which it's based. Roof down, there's very little buffeting, even if you don't use the standard wind deflector. And what there is only becomes noticeable if you're sitting in the back at speeds well over the legal limit. And roof up, well, no competitor can match the library quietness that comes with this Continental. That's now been further improved with acoustic glazing, underfloor shields and hidden anti-vibration panels throughout the interior. The engineers reckon that this second generation Continental GTC is 60% quieter at the driver's ears than its predecessor. I can believe that, and as a result, it's a beautiful car to travel in. Where the very first Continental GTC was elegant and understated, 
This second generation model aims to be a little more modern and contemporary, reinterpreting a family heritage that goes all the way back to Bentley's 1950s R-Type Continental. Hence the more confident look with its wider track, its longer length and its higher waistline. At the front, the classic Bentley Matrix radiator grille is more upright with a black gloss finish, a chrome frame and a red enamel Bentley B badge if it calls a V8 within. The revised headlamp arrangement has the traditional four lamp format and features exquisite detailing with LED daytime running lights. At the rear, Bentley signature floating LED tail lights extend around the corners of the wings, emphasizing the car's width and its purposeful stance. Here again, there are differences with the V8 variant, this darker colored lower valance and these figure eight exhaust tailpipes. What hasn't changed is the effort that goes into creating this automotive masterpiece. It takes over 150 man hours to hand build this car. That's around five times longer than your average family saloon. The steering wheel alone takes over eight man hours to put together. Over 90% of the interior services are covered with soft Nappa leather. And if you tick the box for the cross stitching option, then you'll occupy a Bentley worker in crew for a whole week in doing it. Each W12 engine is built by hand and tested by human ear, as the engineers at the factory have found that to be far more accurate than any machine. Suddenly you begin to understand the rationale behind this car's £150,000 price tag. More justification is found in the beautiful Carmen made fabric hood, which together with chassis alterations adds around 175 kilograms to the coupe model's already considerable weight. Now it's not the fastest operating soft top around, taking 25 seconds from roof up to roof down, but it can be operated at speeds of up to 20 miles an hour and its cantilevered operation is completely seamless with mechanical parts largely invisible as it goes about its contortions. The uh, hood features a triple lined uh, fabric construction that uh, is engineered to ensure the best possible acoustic and thermal properties. The outer layer is thicker than that of any convertible, while the middle insulating layer is also a good deal thicker than the entire roof sections of most drop tops. The inner layer, meanwhile, is made of high quality cloth, so impressive that inside you'd think you're in the fixed top coupe version of this car. Even an interior light is built into the headlining. It's a neat mechanism that can even be operated from the key fob. But of course it's all got to sit somewhere and inevitably the boot capacity of this GTC convertible is a little down on what you could expect from the fixed top coupe model. You've got 260 litres here as opposed to the 358 litres you get in the normal fixed top variant. And at the wheel, we'll tug open one of the long heavy doors and you'll find a cabin that's as gloriously appointed as ever. This V8 model trimmed in lovely dark fiddleback eucalyptus veneer. And as before, you sit quite high in front of a dashboard style to echo the wings of the Bentley badge. The chrome bezel dials are beautiful and everywhere you look there are soft touch leathers, uh, exquisite veneers, cool touch metals and deep pile carpet, all individually crafted by skilled artisans at the Bentley factory and crew. Traditional touches like these organ stop air vents work surprisingly well with more modern features like the much improved redesigned colour touchscreen infotainment system. An important change inside is this revised front seat design, which no longer has the uh, seat belt fixing built into it. Hence the need for this belt butler, which hands the belt to you over your shoulder once you're seated behind the wheel. Now the result is that these seats can be both slimmer and lighter, even if you opt to specify them not only with heating and cooling functions, but also with a neck level vent for extra warmth on chilly mornings. Plus, just as importantly, 
their extra thinness has made the rear section of this cabin a more inviting place for adults who now have slightly easier access to a back seat that gives them another 46 millimeters of legroom. Now, though it still won't be ideal back here for those of over six foot in height, for ordinary shaped adults, this is now a properly sporting four seat convertible, which is a rare thing indeed. List pricing for this GTC starts from just under £140,000 to just over £165,000 once you've allowed for a few well-chosen extras. That represents a premium of around £13,000 for this GTC convertible over its fixed top coupe Bentley Continental counterpart. There's also a £13,000 premium to find if you want to go from this 500 brake horsepower V8 to the 567 brake horsepower W12 model. And if you want the marginal extra performance of the top of the range speed variant, you're looking at a £16,000 premium over the W12. Now, real rivals are few and far between. An Aston Martin Virage Volante or a Mercedes SL65 AMG would cost around the same, but neither has the majestic elegance of this Bentley, either on the move or on your driveway. About the only powerful luxury convertible I could think of that really does is Rolls-Royce's Phantom Drophead Coupe. Hardly a sporting car and twice as costly as this one. Whether you choose this 4 litre 500 brake horsepower V8, the 6 litre 567 brake horsepower W12, or the 6 litre 616 brake horsepower W12 speed, you should find an appropriate level of equipment for such an expensive car. In revised second generation guys, that runs to a 30 gigabyte redesigned color touchscreen infotainment system with SD card reader and a uh, 15 gigabyte music register you'll be listening to on nothing worse than an eight speaker eight channel setup. There's also a satellite navigation with dynamic route guidance, seven digit postcode entry and Google map compatibility. Safety features run to the usual twin side and curtain airbags plus a driver's knee airbag, anti whiplash head restraints and all the expected um, electronic features for uh, traction, braking and stability control. Other standard features include beautiful soft leather Cobra style seats that of course are heated and 14 way electrically adjustable. The steering column is also electrically adjustable plus you get rain sensing wipers, a uh, multi-zone climate control system that automatically readjusts itself when the roof's down. There are 20 inch alloy wheels, park distance control and bi-xenon projector headlamps with built-in daytime running lights. I love the little touches too, this Breitling clock, the powered door latches and these chromed organ stop controls for the vents. That said, I'd balk a little as a potential owner, having spent this kind of money, to then have to find more for pretty standard executive features like cruise control, uh, a rear parking camera and a CD auto changer, not to mention a space saver rear wheel and a uh, warning triangle with a first aid kit, especially as I probably would have already assigned a budget for a range of must-have optional extras. Uh, for me, these would include the peace of mind of a GPS tracking system and, if I had uh, an extra £5,000 to spend, the fabulous uh, NAM for Bentley audio setup that I've got fitted to this car. If I was going to be driving it hard, I'd also want to consider the carbon ceramic brakes, recognisable by their black calipers, a cool £10,000 extra. From then on, it's really a question of how far you want to go. You can opt for larger 21 inch alloy wheels, then have them specially chromed as part of the driving specification. A package that also includes a knurled sports gear lever, drilled alloy foot pedals and Bentley emblems embroidered on the seat headrests. This car also has the convenience specification which gives you radar adaptive cruise control to keep you a safe distance from the car in front on the motorway, plus a colour reverse parking camera. 
It also has deep pile matting, uh, a TV tuner and ventilated seats with a state-of-the-art seat massaging system built in that has no fewer than 10 different massaging cells. From here, you really get into the realms of personalization. You could spend months selecting between special veneers, bespoke colors, and a bewildering range of different leathers um, finished with either contrast or hand cross stitching by the craftsmen and women at Crewe. But it would be a very pleasant couple of months. It was F1 Supremo Bernie Eccleston who once said when questioned why he continued to work when he could never spend all of the money he'd accumulated, that wealth was just a way of keeping score. It's the same sort of thing when it comes to the cost of luxury convertible ownership. The really big ticket cost item in this segment is depreciation, a far bigger cost than fuel or tax issues, especially in a car like this. Expect this V8 model to do rather better than its W12 stablemate here. And residual values in this market are really like popularity ratings. And you certainly don't want to find yourself in something that nobody wants. Which is why the wealthy take a keener interest than you might think in cost of ownership figures across the supercar set. Even fuel economy is important, not in terms of cost, but in terms of operating range. You don't, after all, want to brush your brogues on filling station forecourts any more than you have to if you can afford a car like this. Hence the importance of the 90 litre fuel tank, quite big enough for transcontinental travel. Yes, it would be quicker in your private jet, but that would just be another way of getting from A to B. This is different. You journey in this car. It is the Bentley way. Customers who do express an interest in efficiency will be proudly pointed towards this V8 variant, a model that improves the W12 versions and um, rather thirsty 19 miles to the gallon combined cycle showing by 40% to a much more respectable 25.9 miles to the gallon. Now that's enough to improve the operating range from well, around 330 miles to over 500 miles. The V8 also does better when it comes to CO2 emissions, improving the W12 model's rather embarrassing 347 grams per kilometre figure to a uh, much better, if hardly saintly, 254 grams per kilometre. Now, much of this parsimony is down to the fact that uh, for large parts of the time you'll be driving this V8, it won't actually be a V8 at all. It'll actually be a V4, thanks to the way that a clever system automatically and seamlessly deactivates four of the cylinders when they're not needed. Other reasons for this V8 model's greater efficiency include a surprisingly slim 25 kilogram weight advantage over the W12 and a more efficient eight speed automatic gearbox in place of the Pokia model's older six speeder. But not, as you might expect, the installation of the kind of start stop systems that all cheap family hatchbacks now tend to have. Bentley engineers reckon that the savings from this wouldn't really be worth the effort involved, something which seems to fly in the face of worldwide engineering opinion and automotive fact. If you really want to complete your eco-credentials when driving this car, why? Then you could choose to run it on fearsomely expensive E85 bioethanol fuel, if you can find a garage selling any. What else? Uh, well, insurance, as you might expect, is a top of the shop Group 50. Servicing won't be cheap either, but residual values are pretty firm. Though don't expect to load the car with costly extras and expect to get that money back at resale time, because you won't. This Continental GTC remains a wonderful achievement. It isn't too taxing to create a supercar capable of lapping racetracks at outlandish speeds. But to build something uh, able to do almost the same while cosseting you in an atmosphere akin to an exclusive gentleman's club is a rare feat indeed. Owning one of these is like having your own private jet. In fact, it's better than that because it's so much more usable and roof down you can enjoy the journey so much more. This was always the world's most beautifully engineered open top conveyance. And now with its extra sporting brio, it's even more desirable. 
Is it the proper four-seater supercar convertible we were promised? Well, specified correctly, you could argue that. What's more important, though, is that this remains a gloriously unique way to travel in every way, a true convertible, a Bentley convertible. 